Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today's lesson, we're just going to talk about um, how to interpret graphs and tables of quadratic functions. So the examples will have graphs or tables, and we're just trying to make sense of what we're looking. Nothing really to solve, but just basically trying to figure things out. On this one, it says a fountain shoots water in the air. The graph shows water droplets height y in feet x seconds after it is shot from the fountain. What does the x-intercept of 6 represent? All right, so that y-axis is how high the droplet is, and x-axis is time. They always put time on the x-axis. So it starts down at ground level, shoots up, gets all the way up to 144 after 3 seconds, and then down here at 6. 6 is the x-intercept, and what that means is it takes 6 seconds for the water droplet to rise and fall back to the ground. Let's look at the table here. The table represents a quadratic function that shows how a company's cost to manufacture an item depends on the total number of items produced. What does the y-intercept represent? Well, if you think about y-intercepts, they all have x coordinates of 0, and I think that's what's going on here. Think of this first column as our x, think of the second column as the y coordinates. And the y-intercept is happening right here. Now, looking at the table, can't you kind of see that the more items they produce, the cheaper it is per item. That's why it's always cheaper to buy in bulk, because it, the manufacturer can sell more larger quantity for a lower cost. But if they don't sell any items, it says it still costs 154 So there's still a cost, and maybe that's manufacturing costs, maybe that's the pay of the workforce, whatever it is. But the y-intercept is the cost of the manufacturer of not produced to the, the cost to the manufacturer of not producing any items. Let's look at another one here. <clears throat> this graph models how a farmer's profit from a strawberry crop depends on the number of days the farmer waits after the first strawberries ripen before harvesting the crop. What is the interval on what interval does the profit increase? So this is a graph of profit. Here we see it increasing here, decreasing here. So look for the increase. Zero two, four, six, eight, all the way, looks like it goes all the way to eight. Zero to eight, zero to eight days. And then after that, the strawberries start getting less ripe, and you know how fruit behaves. Nobody wants um, overly ripe fruit. You want to you eat it as soon as it's picked as possible. And, as, and this graph kind of shows that. The profits start to go down, though the longer they wait to pick the strawberries. So zero to eight days after the first strawberry ripens. All right, the next one we have a worker is a fixed amount of fencing to enclose a rectangular area of land next to the river. The river will form one side of the rectangle. The other three sides will be fenced. The table models how the area of the rectangle depends on the side length of X that is parallel to the river. What does the X intercept of 100 represent? It's down here at the bottom. And notice it's an X intercept because the Y value is zero. Think of that first column as X, second column as Y. And X is this length here. All right, so here's all the different dimensions. Now say the question asked about maximum area, that would be right here at 1250. And if the length of X is 50, we'd be good to go. But down here they say, well, what is, what's going on here? All right, well that means it's the thick, the, 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 the person only has a hundred meters to work with. It's a fixed amount of fencing. Obviously that dimension, 100 times zero, 100 length times zero width is going to give us a zero area. But according to this data, that's how much they have to work with. And if the maximum's happening here at 50, if this is 50, well, this side would be 25, this side would be 25. That adds up to the 100, giving us the max area. But that's not what it's asking. What does the x-intercept represent? It's the fixed amount of fencing in meters, or the maximum amount that they have to use. All right, one more here. The graph models the height of a miniature parachute in feet x seconds after it's thrown straight up in the air from the fifth floor of a building. What does the x coordinate of the vertex represent? So a person here is 72 feet up, fifth floor, throw a parachute up high, it reaches a max height, it's almost 145 if you look at that right there. I'd say the coordinates are 145, or uh, 
sorry, 2.5, and notice down here where it's occurring, 2.5, and approximately 145. So the parachute reads a max height, 145. All right, and then what does the X coordinate mean? Well, that tells us when it occurs. The parachute reaches a max height after two and a half seconds. There we go. All right, I hope this video may help you make a little more sense of analyzing and interpreting quadratic graphs and tables. Thank you for watching.